Hello, and welcome to the first lesson for Paulus Romier. I'm going to go over the basics in this video, and if you want to know more, subscribe, and I'll hopefully be putting out more videos about this language. Uh, Paulus Romier, that's hard to say, sorry, is native to Gualan, a country that I completely made up myself. Thank you very much. Uh, it's in the language family of Hawaiian, which means that it has one living language relative, also called Hawaiian. Um, it uses two writing systems, the Kualan alphabet, which is primarily used for handwriting, uh, but it can also be used in print, and Kualalipokan uh, Abjad, sorry, that's really hard to say. Um, which is primarily used in print, but can also be handwritten. This is Gualan, where Polus Romier is primarily spoken. Isn't it beautiful? I drew it myself. The consonants of Polus Romier are E, S, Z, Y, L, T, B, K, B, M, N, or nasalized vowel, D, Sh, J, or J, G, V, N, and R. R. I can't do that one properly. Um, for the vowels, um, E, O, E, U, W, or W, and F. Um, this language considers H a vowel, uh, so just get over it. This is the Kualan alphabet. It kind of looks like a syllabary, but it's not. It's an alphabet, just that it connects some of the letters. All right. <laughs> the Kualalivokan Abjad is not a pure abjad, but I don't think that any abjad is a pure abjad, so it's fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the case system in Polus Romier is a little weird, um, but I like it. It's called split ergative, and it's um, It uses nominative accusative alignment in the present tense and ergative absolutive alignment in uh, the past tense. So either a word's semantic role in a sentence will determine its case or it, any um, ad positions around it. Uh, on the right is a list of the ad positions uh, for, or that are caseless for the ergative case or for the accusative case, and yeah. Oh yeah, for nominative and, and absolutive, the nouns are <coughs> not marked. For ergative, they're marked with wa at the end, and for accusative, they're marked with ye at the end. Uh, noun classes are kind of cool in the language. There is the sacred class marked by guo, um, like guapolus, which means the language. Anything that is considered sacred by the um, culture it will go into this class. There's also the peace class, which is marked by ling, uh, like in li e the hand, um, anything that's considered a part of something else will go into this class. There's also the people class, marked by Ruhol, uh, like Ruhol V, which means the person. Anything that is seen as sentient will go into this class. And the general class, marked by Ru. 
like Murusono, the knight. Uh, anything that's not in the other classes will go into this class. Uh, for the pronouns, they're a little bit confusing, um, but I'll explain. Sun is I, Nubeng is we, Vi is you, animate. So anything seen as sentient that you're talking to and addressing with the second person pronoun will be you'll use me uh, and Tuozua uh, is you inanimate so like if you were talking to a table or to a door you would use Tuozua it's also the um, you plural so uh, Tatum which is he she and they singular but it's also they plural animate and pon is it and they inanimate and then the second row is ergative and the third row is accusative very fun stuff <laughs> um <clears throat> this is all really confusing stuff but basically uh in the simple present tense these are the four basic kinds of sentences that you're going to see um, VC here stands for the copula or the B the B verb so like to be um, VI stands for intransitive so something that the, uh, or a verb that doesn't have an object and VT stands for transitive verb, so verb that has an object, and VD is a ditransitive verb, so a verb that has a direct and indirect object, like give. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really explain more than that, but here is the simple past tense. And as you can see, it is kind of different. It uses the absolutive for, or the ergative absolutive alignment for the past tense. So uh, the word order is a little bit different and the marking is a little bit different. Um, and there's also the auxiliary verb jul being used. <clears throat> That is really all that I'm going to explain now. Uh, each slide, basically, that I used in this video could be its own video. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll break down some more of this stuff in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.